Wouldn't it be cool if Pennywise, Predator, Emily and Gabriel from Malignant, and The Strangers all came to DBD? For me, these are some of my top picks for dream chapters. So let's talk about it. So let's start with Predator. Now Predator is one that I know a lot of us, including me, thought was uh, prob probably gonna be right after Xenomorph, um, but I honestly was kind of feeling like if they did get both, which hopefully they did, if they did get you know both Alien and Predator, I was kind of thinking that they may not bring them bring Predator in immediately after Xenomorph, you know, after Alien. So it's a possibility that this is one of those ones that for me I, I may actually get. You know, for other people who um, <laughs> for other people who want Predator, um, we may actually get this one. You know, um, you know they they typically always come into the game together. You know, if you have Predator, then you have uh, Xenomorph. If you have Xenomorph, then you have Predator. You know, we've had a couple of, you know, we've had a couple of video game adaptations. I know we've seen them in, uh, Fortnite and, uh, you know, so I, I think, um, you know, we've all talked about how they kind of come in as pairs. So it's, I think it's very likely that Predator may come in, uh, Predator may come in at a later date and that would be awesome for me. So let's go over how that would work. So the biggest thing with me and Predator is that there are so many options for like power and, uh, M1 weapon. There, there's so many options. You know, I mean, of course, you know, just talking about the melee weapons or the weapons in general. You know, anyone that's played Predator Hunting Grounds knows that you can use a uh, a bow in that game. And you know, during that during that hype where we thought Predator was coming out after Xenomorph, I was thinking, man, there's no killer in the game that uses a bow and arrow yet. You know, we already have like the wrist blades with Skull Merchant. So I know some people were like, okay, what would his uh, you know main weapon be or power be? And I was thinking, what if, you know, Predator had the option to use a bow and arrow? I don't know if that would be like a secondary power type of deal where, of course, like its power has something to do with active um, with active cloaking or, you know, cloaking itself, of course, you know, with the heat vision. Um, but it could utilize a bow and arrow. It could be a little bit of melee, you know, and and range, you know, because it could be something where Predator does, you know, the, the basic M1 is wrist blades. Now, of course, you can say, well, Skull Merchant has wrist blades and they're very similar to Predator's wrist blades, but that would be very true. And they may not do that. Um, it's not like they don't have other options, but I would also, you know, throw up the, you know, throw out the point that there are plenty of killers in the game that have a very similar weapon. I mean, we've got a lot of knives in the game, <laughs> you know, we've got several swords in the game. So, you know, I guess it just depends on, on the, on the character and the power and how they, you know, play into each other. So I, I didn't, I didn't dismiss the idea that Predator could still come in and utilize, you know, the wrist blades as the, as the main M1 weapon. But the cool thing could be that the main M1 is the wrist blades and it has some type of like timer, like some type of like um, automatic timer that's filling up. And then when it fills up, it can pull out the bow and arrow and use the bow and arrow as ranged attack. Now, of course, there's gotta be like some drawbacks, you know, you don't want that to be too, you know, too 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 oppressive and everything. But, you know, that that's, I was thinking, you know, again, you know, just talking about dream chapters and how that could work. I think that'd be pretty cool. So I'll be thinking, so I'm thinking Predator could be like, wrist blades as M1, some type of automatic uh, timer that goes on cooldown that he pulls out uh, the bow and arrow. And then somehow, you know, you kind of combine that with its um, with its cloaking ability and being able to see, you know, heat signatures across the map. Maybe that could like be, the, you know, the new like aura reading. He has like some type of built in aura reading with the heat vision type of deal. But, you know, you, you can't do it all the time or I don't really know, like the I guess, like the specifics of how that you know could work. But just thinking about an idea, there are several ways we could implement Predator and Predator's power into the game. And I definitely think we could do it without it being too oppressive. The crazy thing that I haven't even mentioned is is the is the shoulder the shoulder blaster, you know where it pulls up the triangle and everything, and you can aim down like that. You know maybe maybe that could be implemented. It, it's it's so many ways. You know <laughs> so many Predator has so many tools that could be so fun to play. You know as killer. Now of course you know with that we would have to think about how the survivors would have uh, counterplay to that. Um, so of course, you know, having cooldowns or, you know, not being able to spam it and you and use it back to back, um, making it so that the shots can't be so quick so that, you know, survivors have time to react to it, things like, or maybe like if, if he had like the, the plasma cannon, like the shoulder cannon, you, the survivors can see the triangle on them, you know, um, as you're aiming at them so they can kind of get ready to move out of the way. You know, it's, I feel like Predator is probably coming into the game 
and I just think they have a plethora <laughs> of tools that Predator could utilize. And clearly I am excited at the idea of that. So that would be great for me, but um, moving right along. So let's talk about Pennywise. So I know that's another one that we've thought may or may not be coming into the game. I don't know a whole lot about the whole deal uh, with, with Stephen King um, on whether, I think I'd heard that, um, that people had X amount of time to utilize the licensing um, for for it and Pennywise up until a certain time and then they couldn't use it. I don't really know the particulars on that. I, I, but I do know that I don't care about there being another clown in the game already. If you're telling me that Pennywise is coming to the game, you can take the money. <laughs> like, you can take the money ASAP. I don't care about that other clown not one bit when it comes to Pennywise. I mean, of course, you know, <laughs> we've got to talk about Pennywise being potentially game breaking, but you know, being honest, there, there isn't really a killer that they could bring into the game that's totally game breaking. I mean, they'll power scaling wise. I mean, they would figure out how to make it work within the within the structure uh, uh, of the game. They, they would figure out a way to make it work. Um, of course, in the lore, Pennywise is like, you know, super strong. Well, I guess, you know, unless you're not afraid of him, then, he's, you know, <laughs> then, then he's not too strong at all. But um, as far as like how that could work, the weapon could be something the weapon I'm thinking could be something like uh, how Wesker you know, has like the Ouroboros that comes out of his arm. It could be something like that with Pennywise where it like kind of grows some type of, you know, it's, you know, I guess like spider legs or something like that. It kind of extends that and that's like the M1 attack. Um, the actual power could have something, obviously have something to do with fear. You know, this is just an idea. Maybe, you know, he could have something where he plays off of the fear of survivors where he can kind of turn into certain things you know we've, we've yet to have a killer that can like really shapeshift into shapeshift into other things and we know pennywise can do that um you know so what if like you know he had some type of power where he could you know figure out what the survivors you know were afraid of and he could actually turn into that maybe even turn into other killers you know and if if like the uh if like the survivors are like basically whatever survivor came into the game with with a certain chapter he could turn into that killer you know what i mean so basically like i mean if you have a, if you have a jane in, in a jane in the trial he could like turn into plague and kind of use her power a little bit or you know scare survivors like that you know obviously i know that is ridiculous because then what about survivors who who didn't come into the game with another killer you know so yeah i know i know that's <laughs> that's kind of far-fetched um i'm just saying that you know we know that pennywise can shapeshift so um utilizing you know thinking and thinking about what he could do for capitalizing on fear and um and, and things like that um i don't even really i, I don't want to say i don't care what they did with the power i just know that it would be very hard for that to not be cool for pennywise coming into the game to not be a fun idea i mean you know obviously the mori you know we, he'd have to open up his mouth you know you and you see the deadlights the mori idea is already you know it's already there you know it's a lot of potential we could have um, with Pennywise, and I'm not really too concerned with, um, you know, with Pennywise being game breaking. I mean, you know, if he's in the game, you know, they they'd find a way for it to be structured within the, you know, the limits um, of the game. If you're telling me Pennywise is coming to the game, I'm on board. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm one of those players that's just excited about the game uh, in, in general. So I'm excited, you know, just to, just to have new content. Um, so yeah, Pennywise all for it all right let's move on to gabriel and emily from malignant so first off james wan as a director is one of my favorite horror directors right now currently um love the stuff that he's been doing um malignant was one that i had been i'd had people tell me to watch it that they thought i would like it for a while and i never got around to doing so until actually i'm actually late I'm actually late to this party. I I didn't see Malignant until last year, and uh, I don't remember when it came. Heck, it may have came out last year, but I know that I watched it after it had already been out for a while. So I was a little late to the party. And uh, when I when I actually sat down and watched the whole thing, I was like, okay, I liked the uh, the creepiness. You know, when when Gabriel would would kind of be taking control, the way he would run, and just thinking about that with DBD. I mean, think about that run animation with it being Emily with that you know with the with the leather with the leather coat on and she's you know running all the way backwards like that i mean that think about seeing that coming at you in, in dvd that's i mean come on now that's undeniable that that's super <laughs> that is pretty creepy to me and i think a lot of people including myself would enjoy that 
you know, of course, we already know what the main weapon, you know, what the M1 would be, would be, you know, obviously the golden dagger that he got uh, during the during the movie. Um, so we know what that would be. I know that there is some there's some possibility for some really cool lobby animations, as we all know, um, when <laughs> when you're, you know, in the um, in the in the lobby, when you're already loaded into a match and you're you're you know, you're looking at the killer from behind. So we could we could see Emily's face like, you know, basically like dormant. And then, and then Gabriel could turn around really quick and kind of scare the camera, you know, kind of like how we get with like Sadako or or like the Xenomorph and everything where they kind of turn around and, or, or Trickster, how they turn around and kind of look at you for a little bit. Think about that. I mean, you're, you're, you're seeing Emily standing there and then Gabriel flips around really quick and, and says something really menacing in the camera. Oh, my God. I can I can clearly see that being something that we all get a kick out of, you know, so I'm, I'd be looking forward to that lobby animation. As far as the power, of course, maybe he could, uh, you know, have something where he has like speakers around the map where he can speak. He can like you can do something where he talks through the speakers and it kind of like confuses. It kind of like confuses the survivors a little bit. And if it confuses them long enough, he can teleport to them. You know, I, I know we've got a lot of teleporting killers, but, you know, I'm just kind of thinking, you know, about ideas. But, you know, you know, something like that for the power. I think, you know, that could be a pretty interesting idea. Of course, the Mori would have to be like would have to be inspired by the one where he got that guy, you know, when he was sitting on the bed. And he's like, you can see he's like sitting on the bed backwards, stabbing the guy. It would have to be inspired by that. I mean, come on, that 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 has to be the Mori or at least something close to that where it like is resembling that that kill from the film. Chef's kiss, right? And then last, we have The Strangers. Now, I know The Strangers may not be as well known as some of the other ones in this list, um, but that is one of my one of my personal all time favorite scary movies. Um, definitely a fan of, uh, of Liv Tyler, also a fan of Aerosmith. So maybe I'm just a little biased, but uh, <laughs> definitely a, a Liv Tyler fan. And uh, I actually really enjoyed that movie. I saw that movie, you know, the, the first I'm, I'm talking about the first Strangers movie, by the way, um, the Strangers movie. But saw that movie a long time ago obviously when it came out and uh i really enjoyed the suspense of that film um in thinking about bringing the strangers into the game now i know this is one that probably out of all the ones in this list that's one that probably definitely won't happen <laughs> um uh but you know again it's just a it's just a video about dream chapters so you know not taking it too seriously but of course, as you know, anybody that knows anything about the strangers, the first thing you guys are probably thinking about or, or one would think about is it being just like Legion. And I think you'd be absolutely correct. <laughs> Again, uh, this is just dream chapters. But my theory with the strangers, instead of it, instead of it being Legion, where they all do the same thing, they just look differently. My theory is that we would have three killers in the game as one killer that have three separate powers or three separate that are in the game separately is what i'm trying to say so basically you know you could load into the match as the strangers like itself you know and then lobby animation is probably like all three of them kind of standing together looking out at the survivors but then you load in as one of them randomly you always load in as a random stranger right the power has something to do with you scaring all the survivors with each of the strangers differently but it, but of course it not being overpowered one idea that i had is that you know something if you've seen the movies they kind of like to just stand and look at you. So one idea that I kind of have, you could f you could switch to each of the killers. I like the idea of like having the guy stranger. He's like the bigger, stronger one with the ax and everything. And when he hits you with the ax, it like kind of sends you flying, kind of similar to when Wesker grabs you. Then you have the one with the black hair that can like uh, run at you. She has like a dashing attack, you know, maybe something similar to Chucky, but obviously not as powerful. Basically, with the third one, with with the blonde stranger, you know, she kind of can stalk you. And then when it gets filled up, you, you get hindered and you start hearing like the noises, like you start hearing like somebody knocking at the door, like how it was with uh in the movie where they kept knocking on the door. Yeah, you know, and it's just something like that, where it's like it's it's fun and it's like staying true to the movie, but it's not too, you know, oppressive. You know, the, the blonde, the blonde one, I think that's the one that knocked on the door, you know, was the, the whole um the which is like my favorite, obviously my favorite line in the movie, which is is Tamara home? <laughs> Perfection. When I first saw that, I was like, oh my, what, what is happening? Who is Tamara? You know, Tamara is not home right now. <laughs> it was just, I really love that movie. I know it wasn't like, you know, it, it wasn't the, like the best scary movie in the world. It's not, you know, it's not super iconic. Um, but I, I enjoyed that one. And I, and I, and since I've been playing DVD, I've kind of always wondered how they could bring in those three killers in, in, uh, into the fog. 
But anyway, um, that that was my my top picks for uh, dream chapters coming into the fog. Of course, you know, I know that some of these some of these or none of these may ever come into the game. Um, just wanted to have a little bit of fun and, you know, talk about, you know, some of these killer or, you know, and talk about these killers and, you know, if they were to come into the game, how it may work or what it would look like and just, and, you know, just the fun of it. Um, as always, greatly appreciate each and every one of you for stopping by the channel and spending a little bit of time with me. With all that said, thanks for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the fog.